Hi everyone, welcome to our channel once again, and welcome to our series on basic mechanics. Kindly subscribe, like, and share. Also leave your comments and suggestions at the comment section. Today we are looking at replacing a system of forces with a force coupled system for 3D bodies. Example two. Let's look at our question and how to solve it. Three forces are applied to the machine component ABD as shown. Replace these forces with an equivalent force coupled system at A. Okay. Let's look at how to solve this question. Okay. Good. So we are asked to find the force coupled system at A, which means that we want to replace all these forces here with just a single resultant force and a single moment at A. And don't forget that this is a 3D body. And we said that anytime you have a 3D body, we use the vector approach, not the scalar approach, but rather the vector approach. So quickly, let's look at how to go about this problem. So what we need to do, you can see that all the forces which are given in this question are given in the scalar form. And we are saying that we are going to use the vector approach. The vector approach, since it's a 3D figure, since the figure is 3D, we are going to use the vector approach. If it's 2D, you can use both the vector and the scalar. But if it is a 3D object, we recommend you use the vector approach. So from here, we need to resolve all the forces into the vector form. And from there, we can get the resultant force. So quickly, let's look at resolving the forces F1. So for F1, for F1, you see that here, you can easily see that the force only have the, the Y component. You can see that it is acting in the Y axis. It is acting in the Y axis. So it only have one component. But look at the direction we are coming down. And don't forget that our directions are always like this. Y up is positive. X here is positive. And then Z here is positive. So this is Z, this is X, and this is Y. You can see that force is coming down. Therefore, F1 is going to be negative 60 J is in the Y Newtons. Now let's come to our F2. F2. You can see that for F2, this is our F2. And the F2 is making an angle of 65 with the Z axis. And if this is 65, then this side is going to be 25, 25 degrees with the X axis. It means that, don't forget that you have said that for 3D object, F in the vector form is always equal to F lambda. It means that here we have to determine lambda first. And we have already established the fact that lambda is equal to cos theta xi plus cos theta yj plus cos theta cos theta zt. But here you can see that the force is only making an angle with the z axis and with the x axis. So we are not going to get any component for y. It means that our lambda will be equal to, if I look at the direction if we resolve this for this is a starting point. You can see that here our z will go this direction and then our x will move, our x will be this direction. You can see that. So it means that on the x we are going to move in the positive x axis, but on the z we are going to go in the opposite direction to our z, which is here we are going to be in the opposite direction. So our Z will be negative while our S will be 
positive. Therefore, you are going to get cos 25i minus cos 65p. And from here, we can get our F2. So F2 in the vector form will be equal to 90 into bracket cos 25i minus cos 65p. And from here, F2 will be equal to in the vector form. This F1 is also in the vector form. So F2 in the vector form is going to be 81.6i minus 68p. This is our F2 in the vector form. Now let's try and do for F3. So for F3, we know that F3 in the vector form will be called F lambda. And we have already established our lambda. So here, our lambda, you can see that the force is making an angle with the Y, which is going this way, and our X, which is going this way, because the starting point is here. So if this is the case, and this is this side is 30, then this side is going to be 60. So it means that the force is making 30 degrees with the X axis, and the force is making 60 degrees with the Y axis. So here we are not going to get any component for Z. But you can see that our X component is moving in the positive direction with our X. It's moving in the same direction with the positive X axis. But our Y is coming down, which is opposite of our positive Y axis. Therefore, our Y is going to be negative. So our lambda will be equal to cos 30i minus cos 60j. And from here, we can get our F3 in the vector form, which will be equal to 120 into bracket cos 30i minus cos 60j. And from here, our F3 will be equal to 103.9i minus 60j. So once you have reached this, we need to get the resultant force, the resultant force. And we know that the resultant force is just summing all of them together. So the resultant force will be equal to F1 in the vector form plus F2 in the vector form plus F3 in the vector form. And that is going to give us negative 60G plus E 1.6I minus it eight k plus one zero three point nine i minus sixty g and from here our resultant force is going to be one eighty five point five i minus one twenty g minus it eight k so this is our resultant, this is our resultant in the vector form, our resultant force in the vector form. You want to get the magnitude, and the magnitude is going to be the square root of 1.85 squared minus plus, plus 120 squared plus 38 squared. And you get the magnitude of the resultant force. So now that we have been able to find the resultant force, let's calculate for the moment, the moment. Now here, because all the forces are acting at different points, we will not use the resultant force to find the moment, but you'll find the moment for the individual elements. And then now you'll join them together after you have been able to determine the individual moments. And we know that moment in the vector form, moment in the vector form, is always equal to R cross F. And R is called the position vector, because we said that it shows the position of where the force has been applied to where we are taking our moment. So the first thing we need to do is to determine this R for all the three forces. So first of all, let's determine R for the force here. 
the force is applied at B. Force is applied at B. So we are going to get RB, which means that we want to get the, the, the direction of where the force is applied from where we are taking our moment. So it's always to move from where you are taking your moment where the force has been applied. You can see that here we are only moving in the X. Therefore, RBA is going to be we change the 200 millimeter to meters. And we know that to change millimeter to meters, you divide by 1,000. So this will give us 0 0.2. We are going to get 0 0.2i. Then we can also get the position vector for this force here. It is also applied at point B. Let's neglect the, the, the weight of the, of the beam here. And let's assume that this force is also applied at the same point as B. So in that case, our R at B for force F2, for force F2, B, when we are starting from A, will also give us the same thing, which will be equal to 0 0.2i. But the, the distance moves in the same direction with our x. That is why it is positive. Now that we have been able to determine that, let me try to clean the side and then we continue to determine our, our moments. Sorry for this. Good. So at this point, we can easily now try to determine our moments. Let me try to separate our space into two. So from here, from here we can get our, for the force applied at C, we can also get our position vector, which will be RC slash A which means that we are moving from A to where the force has been applied at C. And you can see that we are moving this distance on the X. It's in the same direction with our positive X positive. And they will move this distance on the Z, which is in the same direction with our positive Z. So we are going to get 0.2 I, which is the distance from here on the X. And from this point to that point will give us, it's also positive because in the same direction with our Z axis, okay, 0.16. Okay, then from here, we can determine the moment for each of the individual forces. So for moment for force F1, moment for force F1 will be equal to our force for F1, which is our R for F1, which is from A to B, which we are told that is 0.2 I cross our force, which is negative 60, negative 60 J. So from here, we know that I cross J is always positive K. So from here, I'm going to get 12, negative 12 K Newton meter. Then we calculate the moment for force two, moment for force two, L2. That one also, the position vector is the same as this, which is 0 0.2 here. So we are going to get 0 0.2 I cross our force, which our force for F2 is 81.6 I minus, minus 38 A. So from here, we can find the cross product. We have 0.2i times 1.6i. I cross i is always zero. It means that here we are only going to get 0.2i cross negative 38k. And i cross k, if you do your, this is i, j, k. So you can see that from here, i cross k is anticlockwise. So we are going to get positive j. And 0 0.2 times 38 will give us 7.6. We are going to get 7.6k. And then we can do the last one for, for step three. 
force F3. So for force F3, for force F3, we can see that now, sorry for this, but for force F3, we know that this is R cross F and our R for F3 is 0.2 I plus 0.16 A cross our force for F3 and our force for F3 is 103.9 I minus 60 J. So from here, since we have multiple of them, so the K is here, sorry for that. K is here. So this one we can just use our plus, minus, plus, and this is I, J, A. And we said that, so we write all that is here for I 0 0.2. We don't have any J component, so 0 is 1.16. And then for the last one, we have the force 0 0.13. We don't have any component for A 0. Y component is going to be negative six. Then from here, we said that if you want to get the I component, you take away all the I components and you determine the determinant for this two by two matrix. So we said that if you have that, it's going to be, it's going to be zero times zero minus negative 60 times. 0.16 minus, don't forget this minus on the J minus. So the, if you want to determine the J component, we take away J and we left the I and the T. So you find the determinant 0 times 0 0.2, 0 times 0 0.2 minus this times that, which will give us. 0 0.16 times 103.9 J. So this will be I component. And then the last one, if you want to take K, we take away all K components and we we'll left with the two by two metrics for I and J, which is going to be 0 0.2 times negative 60 minus 0 times 103.9 and this will give us the K component. So from here, our resultant moment is going to be 9.6 I plus 16.6 J minus 12 K. Then once we have been able to determine the moment for all the three forces, the next thing is to find the resultant moment. So the resultant moment will be, let's say that the moment for this is moment two, this is moment one. This is moment three. We can see that it's moment one plus moment two plus moment three. So we put all the I components together, we put all the G components together, and we put all the K components together. So from there, our final answer for resultant moment is going to be negative 9.6 I plus. 24.2 G minus 24 K. Okay. And we are done solving our question. That was also very simple. I believe we can all go through and follow through easily and understand whatever we wanted you to understand. But if you have any comment, any suggestion, any feedback, you can also let us know at the comment session. Once again, thank you for watching. Kindly subscribe, like, share, and hit the notification button as well. See you in our next video. Bye-bye.